You don't win if you don't score. That's the bottom line. If you can't put the goals in the back of the net, you don't get three points, and that's where it happens. And Look, it's going to happen, but it did again for LAFC. They're coming off that 2-0 loss to Minnesota United. We'll talk a lot about that today. And it's been 305 straight minutes without a goal. So that's where LAFC is. They dropped a 1-2-1, one, one, four points from four matches on the season. Obviously, that's not where we want to be. Minnesota United is red hot. 3-0-1 uh, uh, now. They were 2-0-1, so they're on 10 points. That's a big game, Mario. It was a, yeah, it a, was. a tough loss, no doubt. Tough loss. Not getting any goals definitely does hurt. But, you know, after the game, Omar Campos said it best. He said uh, there's still a lot left in the season and there's no time to really hang your heads right now. We just got to keep on working. And that's exactly what Steve Chirondolo said as well. He said, you just got to put your head down and just just work. And like my message was to Denis in the last episode of LAFC Plus, just stay focused and keep working and don't let that mess with you mentally. It's frustrating, of course, but, you know, uh, the chances present themselves and the finishing isn't there, but it'll come. It'll come. It will come. We know that. And look, we saw stretches last season. Not that you want to go through this, but I think it was, uh, I don't think it was all MLS games. I think it was, but through all competitions, there was a stretch where we got shut out four straight matches. Now, a few of those were nil-nils, so you were still picking up points. You weren't getting scored on. The defense looked great. This game, yeah, we had the big defensive error. Here's the thing about this match, and welcome to L uh, LAFC Plus, most importantly. He is Mario Rees. I'm Dave Denholm. We love to break down LAFC. The plus comes up a little bit later on the show as we look around MLS, including Minnesota United. They deserve a lot of praise for that match. They played great. So can't take anything away from them. It's not always just about LAFC. Obviously, there's 11 other players they're playing against. But if you don't make errors in this league and you make people score tough goals, you're going to be in a lot of games. You're going to get a lot of points. And LAFC has been doing that. Didn't quite happen in this one. Here's the thing, Mario. We're going to play this cut. This is the uh, that I think it's it's not the difference in the match by any means, but it's the seventh minute in Minnesota on the road. And this kind of just represents how the season's going so far for LAFC. Listen in. Oliveira leaves it into the run of Tillman. Actually, it's now Buonga around the keeper. Buonga's shot is over the bar. Denis got it around St. Clair, who came out of the 18. He had an open goal, and he missed. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Now, I apologize if the audio was uh, not perfect there, but... That's the call that we had in the seventh minute. And again, you know, Denis Bawanga, look, he just missed, barely missed. That's what's going on right now, right? We know he's going to score a lot of goals, Mario, but that could change the whole game right there. Yeah, that's typical of the season, right? Just like you said it. All you can do is just go back to the training facility and just keep working on it and stick to your game and stick to the game model because that's what's worked in the past. And hopefully it will work again. And we all have that faith in Terundolo. And why wouldn't you? He's already won trophies with the club, Supporter Shield, MLS Cup. You know, so it, it's going to work. It's just a matter of getting that finishing. And, and Denis got to be right up there with the most frustrated. But, you know, he'll make it happen. Absolutely. And that's the thing. We're not, like, trying to be negative about it because this team deserves – they deserve all the patience. They deserve mm -hmm. all the benefit of the doubt. I saw yeah. Tom, I think Tom Bogert, who works uh, for The Athletic, and he covers MLS a lot. He had a little video up on YouTube, and I believe his stat, or he got it from some, I apologize, but something like Denis Buonga, still one of the best in terms of expected goals that are not PKs, which they haven't drawn a PK yet. He's still up there, so he's just, he's just missing by inches, literally hitting posts, hitting crossbars. There has to be some patience, but... I got to be honest. I got to lay a, a real stat out here and see what you think, Mario, because I haven't told you this mm -hmm. before the show. M uh, LAFC in 2023 had the Champions Cup early. They did really well. They made a good run. This is Champions League, it was called at the time. But but they started out red hot in MLS, too, as we yeah. all know. First eight matches in MLS play, regular season, they were unbeaten, 5-0-3 picking up 18 points. I mean, that's as good as you can do in Champions, yeah. uh, Champions League, right? We're seeing these teams now, which we'll talk about a few of them more. 
one team who's actually still in the competition champions hasn't even had a win in MLS yet. So it is difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Since then, though, including these four matches to start this year, since then in MLS regular season play only, LAFC is 10 wins, 12 losses, and eight draws. So we got to lay that stat out there. It's What are your thoughts on that? Since early last season, only in MLS regular season, by the way. Yeah, that's regular season, which is the key word. And it's all about whenever you're going into the playoffs and the games that matter and how are you rolling heading into those games. And typically, LAFC is rolling heading into those games. And uh, you never know what happens in the summer window. If you get some type of reinforcement there, which wouldn't be completely out of the realm as well for LAFC to get some help there. You get some DP help. You have two spots available for, for the DP spots. Yeah. So you get some help there. Let's talk about it as we're rolling into the final few games of the season and see how LAFC is, is playing at that moment. I'm pretty confident things will be okay at that point. How are you, where are you at in terms of designated players and how to use them? Because it's always been my belief that by and large, and I know we've seen Walker Zimmerman become a designated player, former LAFC player. We love Walker. By and large, you use them to attack, right? You yeah. use that big designated player money. Now, that doesn't mean you just get a striker always, like a number nine or just three strikers, obviously, but use them for attacking prowess, right? Is that is that how you see it with the DPs for LAFC? Most definitely. I'm with you on that one. And honestly, LAFC hasn't really had to use all three of the DP spots, you know, throughout the history of the black and gold. So uh, you can do with or without the DPs, but like I said, heading into those playoffs is where you want to be clicking the most. Yeah, it's exactly right. It's a long build. Yeah. But we also have to remember, though, you know, you're six points back in Minnesota. Again, Minnesota United might win the supporter shield or they might fall out of the playoff race. You don't know. It's not about them so specifically. Early. Yeah. But you are back a ways. Like, you don't want to get buried early because these games, as we've always talked about, a game in March counts exactly the same as a game on decision day, three points, or in November, or, Oct or rather October or September. Now, LAFC, as you said, they did finish strong. So that's in our blood, if you will, to get ready for the postseason. I get that. But we also don't have Champions uh, Cup right now. So it's not as though we're being you know, stretched apart with all these games. I know the U.S. Open Cup is coming up for us and yeah, the schedule gets busy, leagues come. I get that. But this is not a time where we're getting worn down. And you can see that. We, we How many players did we have on the bench, Mario, last last game? Six? Yeah. <laughs> but you it can only use... a full roster. Yeah, you can, yeah. you can only use five anyway, so it doesn't really, you know. But yeah. it's not going to hurt you that bad. But, yeah, I mean, there's things we have to keep an eye on. And certainly uh, the designated, designated players potentially come, you know, something in the, in the summer. Yeah, everybody's going to be keeping an eye on that. Long mm -hmm. way to go. You don't like to see these losses. We all know that. Let's just, you know, keep your head down, as you said. Keep building. Mm -hmm. This team's going to be fine. I believe that. No two ways about that. I mean, Dave, it's not the it's not the start that we all expected the group uh, to have, but it isn't a bad start either. As, aside from a few costly mistakes, the chances have been there, and it's always tough to play on the road in MLS. We all know exactly. that. And that, Absolutely. that is showing early on so far for the black and gold. Now, luckily, it's time to go back home again uh, this weekend against Nashville. And yeah, props, props to Aaron Long too. Let me give props to Aaron Long on his effort and his performance. Yep. And there's a reason why you kept shouting out his name during the match because he was solid. He played his guts out all game long. Props to Aaron Long and Eduardo Tuesta, of course. He made his 100th regular season appearance for for LAFC. One of the most beloved uh, players in Black and Gold history, alongside, of course, Carlitos, of course. Yeah, I'm lifting up my. Uh teacup if uh, people are not uh, watching this on youtube if you're hearing it on uh, audio uh, kudos to edward here's to at least 100 more so that's uh, yeah, yeah salute salute cheers to that absolutely sure. speaking of you know we mentioned walker zimmerman in nashville se although he's been injured we will be seeing them but let's do a, a segment we like to call and the, the club basically calls it this part of our history right that's part of lafc is this Part of our history, how we look back when people, you know, maybe leave the club, players, 
uh, uh, people behind the scenes. A uh, couple of big notes of that so far this week. Uh, Latif Blessing traded to Houston. Yes. Uh, now, Mar Mario, we know Latif is since leaving LAFC. He's been a couple of spot stops. Obviously been traded a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see him on uh, July 7th, it looks like, at Houston in that match. That's the first time we face them of uh, the two matches this season. Always love Latif, Mario. You got any Latif stories you want to uh, pass along? Of course. He's one of your dad's favorite <laughs> players of all time, right? That's right. I mean, yes. if, if he passes the eyeball tests for your dad, you know he's got to be somebody special. And, of course, we all fell in love with him when he was here with the black and gold, one of the most likable guys in all of MLS. Yeah. Everybody who meets uh, Latif loves him. He seems extremely happy to be there in Houston. And, you know, all the best to Latif and his beautiful family. Yeah, we wish him nothing but the best. Uh, another guy that we love who has just stepped away from the club, obviously, in the offseason, free agency, part of our history, Kellen Acosta. Now, he's on the yeah. show for a slightly different reason. Holy cow. By now, I think we've all seen the video of this goal that yes. Kellen pumps in, what, 99th minute, somewhere around there. They had already yep. scored in stoppage time to tie it, like deep in stoppage time to tie it. Then they got even more minutes added on in the sense that plenty of time and he pumps a ball up from my goodness 10 yards inside his own half into that mm -hmm. Chicago jet stream they don't call it the Windy City <laughs> for nothing and I'm not the only person yeah. who said that right that's been said a million times but of course and this thing flies over a stranded keeper from Montreal who was uh, way out of his uh, area well, not out of his area but he you know got caught mid what midway through the 18 maybe a little further out and that thing just kept going and Dave, I'm never, I'm never leaving Cali. You know that. You know how much I love the Cali weather, and I'm especially never going to Chicago because I hate the wind. Really? But what a crazy, crazy goal for for Kellen, and not just any goal. This is this is a game winner, game like winner. you said, in the 90, 99th minute of the match in a battle that was going back and forth. Seven total goals in that match had to be a fun match for all those fans that were in attendance there at Soldier Field. Initially, though, it was it was a cross heading over to the right side of the yeah. box. And then all of a sudden it just got, you know, catching that wind and starts flowing into the to middle of the box and right over the keeper's head and in for the game winner for for Kellen and his first goal with the club, their first win. Congrats to, to Kellen on that one. It's funny, too, because it the way it looked, Mario, I was watching the match like live mm -hmm. and the way it looked to me was. Like that wind took over, took that ball over with a vengeance. It's not like yes. it just floated. Oh, it, it's going further, and it's it's just kind of the wind's pushing it off course, but it's still just this thing. It seemed like the wind almost like yes, it moved it off course, but then like shot it down at a. Yeah. It, that's just the way it looked to me. I, I'm sure that's not the case, physics, whatever. But <laughs> it, it almost seemed like the wind just took it and threw it to a certain. The spot. wind took it off of the tv screen as well if you notice yes. that it went off of the screen oh my goodness. and then all of a sudden it, it like had this trajectory just going down straight down oh yeah it was something special and then uh, i saw a quote from kellen after the match he said i had some saint patrick's day luck ah, the wind was able to take it and then when i left my foot he said I was almost upset with myself, like, dang, I could have blew it on that opportunity. <laughs> but he was excited for his first goal, and he got the win for the club. Look, Chicago's still struggling, but if there's one thing we've talked about and we know about Kellen Acosta, he's a winner. Always oh, has yeah. been and always will be. He'll turn that thing around by himself if he has to. In Chicago, mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to they're gonna love the benefits he brings, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch and on the pitch, winning. It doesn't matter how you do it. This is a classic example. We move on to football fit check here on LAFC Plus, one of our favorite yeah. segments. And uh, Mario, hey, we go right back to the man. You uh, lead us off here with the Acosta himself. I'm not sure which one I like more, the goal or the fit that Kellen walked up. There you go there. I'm going to punch it up there on the screen for you guys. Nice. Kellen walked up like this to the stadium, so I'm not sure which one I like more. Was it that goal from midfield or was it this fit here? And it takes a man of of total confidence like Kellen does to rock this leather outfit, full leather outfit. I mean, from the jacket to the pants you see there, to the boots. Red, Chicago he's fire. He's even, on, he's even yeah. on brand exactly with the red, yeah. Dave. He's on brand yeah. with the black and red 
I mean, Kellen was was one of the best uh, dressed players last year for the black and gold, deservedly so, of course. And now Denis kind of filling in that role nicely, I might add. Uh, but as far as like fashion, Kellen's got to be one of the flyest dudes in MLS right now. I know DeAndre Yedlin, he does his thing. He's tremendous with his style. Ibiaga, another former black and gold player, he's very creative with what he does with his looks. But Kellen is right up there at the top with uh, some of the best dressed players in MLS, Dave. Well, it, it certainly, and yes, I agree with you. It certainly doesn't hurt, Mario. And you know this because this is how you know how you are. Me, not so much, at least since college. It doesn't hurt that clothes fit these players perfectly because they're all like <laughs> rail thin. You know, they're all in the best shape of anybody. Nobody could rocks be. that black t-shirt like you, though, Dave. Come on. Oh yeah, the black t-shirt is a go-to for this cowboy. Yes, no doubt, but. I, I can't do the leather pants, but that's a whole other <laughs> other animal. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, it helps. These guys look tremendous in just about anything. But this is a really yeah. wild outfit, really wicked outfit. Not my style, but man, that doesn't matter when it comes to football fit check. This thing is an A plus, right? I mean, this thing is. Oh yeah, he looks good. Yeah, yeah. Top you know who quality. else looked good in black though over the weekend? Was the oh, black there we and go. gold here? LAFC two got a new kid as well. Look at these guys, the youngsters. They're rocking it, and they're rocking it well. I guarantee that we will see some of these these LAFC two kids at BMO Stadium this year. Don't be yeah. shocked, Dave. That's I, how I much people really like these. I mean, I know they want to. They want the LAFC two to stand out, mm -hmm. right? So they give them a little different. I was a little surprised it was different though. And it, mm -hmm. Like it caught me off guard. Not that I'm a big surprise about it, but yeah. I wasn't expecting it. Then you see these things are sharp. No it caught doubt. my eye right away when, when I saw it on IG. Uh, these totally could have been the new jersey for the first team, honestly, to be to be quite honest. And I wouldn't even have a problem with that. Uh, the youngsters, they felt good and they, they looked good in their new kits, earning them that victory uh, over the weekend. 4-1 victory, right, Dave? Yeah, sharp kit, 4-1 win, by the way. It was funny, though. I watched this match as well. I wasn't there, but I did watch it. I was streaming it, and you don't really see how great the kit looks from a distance. It's when they give you the close-ups, you know, because yeah. sometimes the camera angles on the the LAFC two, the MLS Next Pro, are a little farther out even than the MLS games, right? Yep. If you're watching it on yes, a television or streaming, yeah. So it's only until they really focus in and they take a, a tight angle or a tight shot, yeah, very sharp, no yeah. doubt about it. Uh, and, and you know, the stripes would help me. My, my girth. So these this will look really good, no doubt. Get that bad boy in a nice double X there. Look out! But no, that's a great, <laughs> a great kit. Now speaking of the youngsters, yeah, they've got the four one win. Let's go to youth movement now for LAFC. And uh, you, you know, we talked about the Minnesota United match, Mario. Yes, good to see David mm -hmm. Martinez in there. Ordaz got some time. You know, we obviously Christian Oliveira started. Uh, Omar Campos solid. Not much else to say. I mean, there's not much to – when you go back to the Minnesota United, I think it's more of the overall so far, yeah. right? Because that was a tough loss. I agree. David mm -hmm. Martinez didn't look at his best in this match because he, he didn't have you know a whole lot of time to do much. Got a nice little shot off. Didn't quite put it on I – mean, you can see the talent there. Though. That's the key, oh, right? Yeah. And he, the more time he gets, the more time he will get, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, right? So you, the talent is there. It, he's just – absolutely dripping with talent i have no problem with that not much to say about this match though it just was i keep one of thinking those... about bmo stadium the last the last match that david martinez made his debut at yeah uh, at home wow he brought that life into that stadium and if he would have finished that oh it would have been an incredible moment for david oh, and know. the black and gold like what does that do to a, a player's yes. confidence you know it's and the it's season about... honestly the start yeah. of the season yeah yeah we kind of saw that with Denis mm -hmm. and a different player. He was already a seasoned veteran or, you know, he's not an 18 yeah. year old when he came here, but he struggled a little bit early in terms of when he first got here late, you know, the second half of 2022 by struggle. I mean, stats, we could see the talent clearly yeah. he was a, again, seasoned veteran. So, but once he got that big goal against Portland, then he gets mm -hmm. a goal in the playoff, you know, he starts playing well. Gets the goal in the playoffs and then look out, you know, and then it was just yeah. he carried over. So, again, different situation. David Martinez is still finding himself as a pro. He's only 18. So, 
we're not going to, you know, there's nothing to worry about by any means, but it does sometimes take a little time. I got to believe when the floodgates open for that kid, Mario, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's Look what out. we're all hoping for. So we move on. Speaking of uh, performances, uh, we go to the newcomer in MLS type performance and Mario, I got to go back up north, but it's this time to uh, Montreal. Yeah. And they lost. We talked about that match with Chicago. They lost in bad fashion. They had a they had two one you know, a three one lead, I think. Then they were three two up late in stoppage mm -hmm. time. <laughs> they give up two goals, including that Kellen Acosta one. But uh Matthias Kokoro from uh Montreal, they brought him in from uh Uruguayan forward. Uh mm -hmm. two penalty spot goals. So it wasn't like I don't know if you watched this match, it wasn't like he dominated, but he's got three goals and an assist in four matches. And to me, when you have Mahala Apoku, former LAFC forward, who goes out injured, and you have this new guy, Mario, mm -hmm. you need that new guy to catch fire if you're Definitely. a team like Montreal, right? And he did. He has. And he is. So I got to give him credit because, yeah, they lost that match, but they're playing very well. So, I, you know, that's what I, where I look at these performances by newcomers. You got to hit the ground running in MLS now, in a sense. Otherwise, it's it could take a while, and then you you know, it could be tougher. The tougher it is, the it's going to be even harder and harder and harder. And with a team like Montreal, they need results early because they're on the road. I think for six, seven games again. Now they're midway through that. They're already gathering a lot of points. So, full credit to them. Our letting they cook kind of. Oh, Hold sorry, on, go ahead. I'm kind of. I, I gotta say, I'm kind of liking this segment here about the best newcomers in MLS because you have your eye on everything. <laughs> and some of us don't really catch every single game. I mean, it's a lot of games over the week. Oh, weekend, is that why you, you know? sat there so just like, smiling at me on that one? Yeah, you're honestly, like, uh -huh. honestly, Dave, we can't keep, you know, we can't keep up with every single game, every single player, but you do. And I don't know how you do it. I mean, I know you love the beautiful game. I know you love football. <laughs> I know you love your MLS, but yeah. that's why this, this segment here of, of LAFC Plus is so good because you put us up on game on these newcomers uh, from all over the country that are coming to MLS. And they're playing well, so gives us something well, to keep an that. eye on. You know, it's, I, I definitely have uh, probably, I mean, to say it, to put it mildly, I guess I have less responsibilities than a lot of people in a sense. You know, like, yeah, you know, I got to take care of business and do all that. But, you know, part of, of my job is I got to watch a lot of soccer. No question. I probably, yeah. and I don't say this lightly, and I'm not talking to you, Mario. I'm talking to, you, to anybody out there. I, I, There's a good chance I watch more soccer than you do. I mean, that's yes. not like I'm not <laughs> bragging, like, and I don't mean you. I'm talking everybody. I, it's just that's the numbers. I mean, it's just, that's just every time what I bring I up a story, you already knew about it. You already know about it. You already have an opinion about it. That's why you are. Yeah, it's not to make anybody you feel you know good or bad, whatever. That's not. I'm not bragging about that. That's just stupid. It's just part of my job, you know. So, yeah. but I do happen to see a lot. And one of the play, things I saw is these these Trivella passes over the weekend too. I don't know. Yeah. You probably caught some of these, but. Of it course. wasn't just one, but this is part of our Let Him Cook segment because uh -huh. the one I saw was NYCFC's Julian Fernandez. Wow. I mean, he's yeah. got a lot of talent anyway. This guy is loaded with talent. They're a mess coming into this match against Toronto, who's been playing, you know, above their, you know, punching above their weight. Toronto gets an early goal, and you're thinking, yikes, this is falling apart for NYCFC this year, and Toronto's on a rocket ship to the moon. Not so fast. MLS steps in, right? And MLS things happen. <laughs> yeah. And NYCFC just grinds it out. Even down a man after they got the 2-1 lead, they were they went down a man to a red card and still hung on. So mm -hmm. they get the win at home. Julian Fernandez with a Trivella that was, wow, right to the head of Kevin O'Toole who buried it. And, yeah, you got to have the finish too. Otherwise, we're not yeah. talking about it, right? Because uh, But let him cook this kid. And again, it was one of many, it seemed, Trivella passes the out. Who's Who kind of, uh, what was it, like Quaresma, right? He's kind of the the old uh, Portuguese player mm -hmm. who, for my money, was one of the most fun players to watch ever. I mean, that guy, like, pulled that trick out of his bag quite often. But the Trivella, that's, what's maybe your trick that you like? What's the trick? Is it is it a Panenka, the penalty spot? Is it a Trivella? Is it a... Uh, Oh, what's that one where you like? Do you do the behind? I can't do it, but like you use your front foot, but actually you go behind it. Is it a rev, rev, 
Oh, I, I'm, oh, I'm blanking. Oh my gosh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> but uh, I like you know the Travella. I like the Travella too. I also yeah. like the Olimpico. That's another oh, kind of trick. Kind of. Tr but Dave, I want to go back to this play here with uh, with O'Toole here and Fernandez. First off, it was the run from O'Toole to find yeah. that open space. I mean, he bolted for that for the penalty spot. He bolted for the penalty spot, and then it was kind of like a little bit of communication with the hands from O'Toole that kind of said, you know, over here, Put and then the there, eyes yeah. the eyes connected between him and Fernandez. And then O'Toole, you know, just gets to the spot and the cross. Con los tres dedos, Dave. Tres dedos. The three toes. That's how I say it in Spanish. Los tres dedos. <laughs> Fernandez put the ball right there, right at the penalty spot. O'Toole was there. And the finishing with the header was just top class. Uh, you couldn't ask for anything more. It is amazing how a, a great goal has to come about where generally speaking, it's not just the finish, right? Like that yeah. pass has to be perfect. O'Toole has yeah. to make the run you're talking about. Mm -hmm. He has to recognize the run. Then Fernandez has to recognize O'Toole making the run as he's sprinting. Then you got to hit the perfect Trivella, which is not easy. I mean, that you can blow that up in a million ways, right? The three toes yeah. become two toes and it's in the third row of the stands or four toes and forget about it. You're blasting it past him. Hits his head perfect. Then he's got to bury the header. All of this yeah. stuff happens in a split second, if or less, quite frankly. Or, and then it all has to, you know, everything's got to go perfect. Unless it's like some, you know, crazy bouncer. I'm talking like beautiful setup goals like that. It's just a thing of beauty. It really is. Yeah. And, that, and that then was to hit just... a top shelf to avoid the keeper in the corner. There you go. First yeah, win what of if, the season, NYCFC. What if he heads it right to the keeper? Right, yeah. you, you know, what if mm -hmm. he did, and it's like, oh, what a great pass, but okay, mm -hmm. we're never going to talk about this again. You know, oh, what a shame, just a, one of many chances that you know, and that that happens all the time too. <laughs> I mean, let's be fair, yeah. it's tar hard to score. That's why games are not ten to eight. So yeah, it just you have to celebrate something like that when it happens, as beautiful as that. Around the yeah. rest of MLS, Mario. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, New England Revolution. 0-4 in league. Now, to be fair, they're still alive in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. So, yeah, full credit to them. Yeah. But they are not looking good in MLS. And it allowed me to – it kind of forced me to think about New England with some – a bit of – maybe a bit of harshness here. They've had some success, no doubt. This is a club that has not been bad. You know, I'm not trying to pick on them or anything, but – I think they've done well in spite of themselves as an organization, if that makes sense. Seems weird to say, because when you're pretty consistently good, you've got to be doing some things right. I was going to say, they're pretty historically a pretty good organization. But it just feels like you want to just yell at, just do a little more, yeah. right? I'm talking like ownership-wise, bottom line. like Go on that next step, because mm. you're right there. Yeah, that's you know, true. Like, you can't fault them on some level. Excuse me. But just just that little more. And yeah, that comes down maybe to investment. Maybe it's that stadium they've been talking about for seems like two decades. Like, oh, we're going to, yeah, that's, that's, you know, I understand those things take time. But this is not a team that has just languished at the bottom and it's just they can't figure it out. Something's working. You got to give them credit for that. But it just reminded me as I saw the 0 and 4 in MLS. And yeah, this is not a team that struggles usually. It's just just a little more. You don't have to. We're not talking about spending 45 million on somebody. You know, I, we understand that's not going to happen. And they've got some great players. Just just take it to that just that next step. Now maybe it's just too difficult. I mean that's maybe what makes LAFC different or. Concacaf basket. What do you think about that? Maybe they're just focusing on on, on that. Yeah, right because now. I'm not. Yeah, this is not about zero and four in the big yeah. picture, right? Yeah. It just it right. just brought me to that in my thinking. The zero and four, mm -hmm. you can yeah, they're a mess in MLS. That whatever. If they win Concacaf Champions League, nobody's gonna care. Seattle a couple <laughs> years ago, right? They got the right. job done, and then they missed the playoff. I mean, it happens. So that's mm -hmm. not what it's really about. But I think that you know, even the fan, I think the New England Revolution fan would agree with me. That's the bottom line. Hmm. Uh, who is really good in this league, though? There's, right now, it's a lot of beating each other up. 
as I look at it, and there's a long way to go, this is going to change. There are only two teams right now who are really good, in my estimation. Inter Miami, not exactly a breaking news there, and Columbus. They're really good already. Now, can some of these other teams get there? Yes, of course. Other teams will. It's a long season. LAFC, I'm not counting out by any means to be right up there, you know, and start rolling soon. And other teams too. But right now, those are like the cut above. And it also got me thinking, though, it's possible it's a year where just teams beat on each other too. Maybe there aren't like the great teams this season. That happens. It's sports, right? It's cyclical. Maybe the Dodgers aren't going to win 120 games no matter who they sign this season, right? I mean, these things happen. But it got me thinking about League's Cup, Mario, and I know it's a long way out. We've got the League's Cup schedule you want to talk a little bit about, but could it be trouble for MLS this season? That, first of all, League Amecki's got woke up a little bit last season, right? Yeah. It is tougher for... MLS and CONCACAF Champions Cup because it's early in the season. It's tougher for Liga MX in Leagues Cup. They have to travel. They're away mm-hmm. from home more, and it's earlier in their season. So yeah. it's like that one or the other. What do you want? You know, but I think it woke them up last season too. So they're going to be ready. I think it woke up a lot of fans too. I mean, some some fans were kind of, you know, what is this and kind of wondering what's going to happen with this Leagues Cup. But once it got going, Dave, it was on and fans were into it. Liga MX was into it as well. Yes, there's some disadvantages on both sides, of course, but MLS teams were into it. Yeah, Fans were all over it. Uh, of course, Liga MX doesn't have a true home. Like you said, there are no home games due to the fact that none of these games are going to be played in Mexico. And on the MLS side, you know, sometimes the salaries don't really compare to the Liga MX side. Let's just be real with it. And, and when you go against the Mexican powerhouses like the Club Americas, the uh, the Tigres, the Monterreys, and so on, it's very noticeable, especially when you get into those second halves and you're making your subs. Uh, the talent coming off of the bench for some of these Mexican sides is just incredible. These guys could be starters for MLS teams. They could be starters for the MX team. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's something to look forward to, but I could see the disadvantages on, on both sides. But, hey... It's it's great when the games are on, the fans love it, and it gets heated, so we love it. Yeah, I'm not saying that Liga MX sides either weren't taking it serious last year. They were. I mean, oh, it yeah. was a great it was great from the first whistle. But mm-hmm. are they going to be more woke up about it in a sense, Mario? That can be concerning for MLS. Like Liga MX knows Liga MX sides now know that they can get they can get beat. They can get mm-hmm. drubbed if they're not careful. Yeah. So, I think you have to if you're MLS Long way to go, but I really feel like Inter Miami, you know, obviously did what they had to do to win a last season. They could do that again, of course. They're probably the best team mm-hmm. in CONCACAF. Right? They probably are. Doesn't mean they're going to win CONCACAF Champions Cup. There's plenty of good teams still in it. And anybody that tells you, like, any Liga Mekis team can win League's Cup, no. Those powerhouses, Damn, really- you, those powerhouses you talked about, Mario – Count them yeah. on one hand, dude. There's not 18 of them in that league, right? I mean, there's some True. bad teams in League MX. I mean, there are. I'm really looking forward to our match with uh, Cholos at Tijuana. Oh, I mean, sure. They have, Absolutely. They have Christian Vera, the Colombian, of course. And then we're all familiar with Efrain Alvarez, former Galaxy player. He's over there, and he's playing actually well. playing well. Yep. He's playing well for Tijuana. Yes, he is. And, and that's a home game for us. But I just wish there was a second leg in that one so that we can go to Tijuana, Dave. Oh, we can take you, you over dare. there Dude. and we can live the atmosphere at Estadio Caliente there in Tijuana. Uh, for those that haven't been over there to a Cholos game in Tijuana, this, this is what you do. I have the whole game plan right here. This is what you do. You go to the dog races that are right outside of the stadium. There's dog races, a track there for Love the it. Greyhounds to race. You put Love some money it. on the Greyhounds. There's a casino there in the parking lot. Then when as you're parking, as you're driving to find a parking spot, you'll find that there is a zoo. There's a zoo there o- owned by the owner of the Cholos. And there's like all kinds of exotic animals in there, Dave. You wouldn't even believe what's in there. <laughs> awesome. um, you oh eat some gosh. ceviche sitting in your car with like all these other, you know, fans. And there's bandas playing there. You hear some music. And then 
you finally go into the game and enjoy the game and the atmosphere in the game is incredible there in tijuana and then afterwards you go for some tacos dave you can't beat that the tijuana that sounds like street a tacos perfect day all the way oh, come on you know gambling, it you know it gambling yes. a zoo <laughs> A zoo of a game, <laughs> probably between uh, Jolos and uh, LAFC. It would be a crazy yeah. game in there. Oh my god! And then you go eat like you're until your heart's. I mean, it's like a, my perfect day. I got to be honest with you. So that that's a perfect kind of way game no right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you'll have to. I guess you can make your own what LA version, right? You start at uh, Commerce Casino. I like yeah. the bike, but either one or both. You know, go play a yeah. little poker. Go you know bet on some stuff. You know, over at the bike. Then you go to Holbosch downtown. You get your ceviche there. Yes. You go to LA Zoo for a little bit. It's a little farther <laughs> away, you know, not far, but you know, it's not like it's right in the parking lot. Grab yeah. you know some uh, you know nice exotic animal pictures or whatever you want to do. Then you go to uh, BMO Stadium. You watch LAFC Ponchos in that game, probably four 0 Just kidding. Yeah, uh, we don't know yet, <laughs> and uh, I won't make predictions like that. But then and then you go back to you know a taco stand outside. You know this is. Perfect. Pick your favorite. You gotta let me know if we can but... make Hobosh happen this week. Let's make Hobosh happen this week, Dave. Please. I know Anytime. we normally do anyway. <laughs> Anytime, no doubt. Well, that is gonna do it for us. We will have an opportunity probably before the match coming up on Saturday. We're yep. back at it at BMO Stadium. LAFC hosting Nashville. Another tough one, you know. It's a tricky opponent, no doubt. They definitely are gonna make it difficult. They always make yeah. their opponents, you know, have a hard time offensively playing against. Nashville. So we'll see how that goes. Seven o'clock Pacific for the pregame, Mario. And this one is on the ESPN LA app. Great yeah, stuff Nashville, as always, Mario. Absolutely. Dave, I was going to say Nashville's going to be flying in here, uh, feeling pretty good, uh, pretty confident after their 2 1 win yeah. at home versus Charlotte, too. So watch out for them. And we get to see Hani Mukhtar. Mukhtar is one of the one of the best players in MLS. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle of Bowanga and Mukhtar who haven't really found their rhythm quite yet, but yet they're two of the best players in MLS. Oh, sure. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, no doubt. Nashville may be a little trickier at their place. You know, they're gonna mm-hmm. they're much like MLS, a little tougher to go on the road. So hopefully a good opportunity here for the full three points in front of the uh, BMO Stadium faithful. Always good to talk to you here on LAFC Plus. If you want to hit us up. Hit us up on our social media everybody, or leave comments if you happen to watch us on YouTube. We've got some great comments there. Appreciate it. We take them to heart. We definitely try to, you know, listen yep. to everybody. Doesn't matter, positive, negative, or whatever people think. That's fine. Anything to improve LAFC Plus. That's what Mario and I are looking to do. I'm at yes. Talk Soccer on uh, Twitter or Dave underscore Denholm on Instagram, Mario. I am at Mario, at I am Mario Ruiz. Again, that's I am Mario Ruiz on all the uh, social platforms. And also, Dave, just by the way, I just want to mention that LAFC Plus can now be found on the ESPN LA app. Of course, you know, ESPN LA is the radio home of LAFC. That's where you can hear Dave and I uh, with the LAFC radio broadcast. It's super easy, too. All you got to do is just go to the app store and download the ESPN LA app which is free, by the way. And then you look for the square that says LAFC Plus Podcast. You click on that, and then boom, it takes you right to the YouTube page. You can see the the latest episode of LAFC Plus right there on the ESPN LA app, aside from all of the other favorite places where you find all of your uh, podcasts at. Uh, Great call. Great call. Episode 5 of LAFC Plus is now in the books. Can you believe that? Thanks so much to everybody who's been listening and watching this on YouTube listening on your podcast streams. We appreciate it. Keep in touch, and we will talk to you next week. Take care. See you Saturday night at BMO Stadium.